All right, so let's paint this blade. Uh, sorry in advance for the time lapse, but the original commentary on this was awful because um, I can't paint and talk very well at the same time. And so I decided to re-record the commentary for a little bit better quality, but then I didn't want to sit through an hour of me painting, <laughs> so I condensed it all. Um, as a compromise, though, the the last one, which will be like touch-ups or something like that, that'll be I'll leave that one real time, so you can you can listen to me grumble and mumble my way through that one. Um, but anyway, I guess I should talk a bit about what I'm doing here. Um, so the first thing that I did was I just laid in like value and I kind of blended it out, and I think the objective here is mostly just to kind of turn your brain off and and let some surface detail come out kind of organically uh, but then I immediately jumped into doing details which is bad habit but hey what are you gonna do <laughs> it's a free tutorial can't expect too high a quality that center part there I actually struggled with quite a bit I think it's because I I didn't spend enough time designing initially you know it's like I did a little sketch in like two minutes and kind of went with it I probably should have like iterated on the design and tried to solve some of those problems beforehand. Uh, here I'm adding in some uh, warm color to kind of counterbalance the, all the cool gray that I have in there, which sounds a lot more technical than it probably really is. That's something I need to do is kind of do like a fundamentals of digital painting or something like that, you know, for you guys that are trying to learn how to paint. It's like I was, uh, one of my goals this year is to try to learn how to do music, and so I've been watching tutorials on that, and, you know, I'll watch these guys, and they'll be like, oh, you just put in a melody or whatever, and they kind of hammer one out really quickly, and it sounds amazing when they do it, and I try to do the same thing, and mine sounds like noise, <laughs> and, uh, and it's like, I don't know, I don't even know enough about music to know what I'm doing wrong, to go find out how to fix what I'm doing wrong, if that makes sense. And so it, it kind of got me thinking that it was like, well, I bet that's how people are. You know, if you don't know how to paint and you watch my videos, that's probably what it's like. You know, it's like he's talking about these warm and cool colors and contrast and value. It's like, if you've never painted before, you probably have no idea what that means. So I need to get something up for you guys. Um, here I'm recoloring it. Uh, I'm just using blend modes on the brushes, but since I did that, I have to go through and rebalance out all those colors again, so I have to put in some warms and stuff. I don't, I'm not even sure why I recolored it. It's, at the time, I didn't think that it looked good, that's why I did it, but looking at it on the playback, it looked okay. It looked doable, anyway. That's okay. I, I like I like the results that I wound up with. Uh, there's a plane flying overhead. I hope it doesn't pick up on my microphone. Uh, so I, I put in some bounce lighting and stuff down there at the bottom, but I, I wind up killing it and uh, redoing that in the touch-up video after these. I do like the texture that I wind up with on the bottom, but... I lose some of it when I do that bounce lighting. Probably one of the most tedious things with painting in Blender, at least to me, is cleaning up your brush strokes. Uh, it's basically related to what I was talking about in the setup section with the small brushes get really chunky and pixelated. I guess if I was smart, I would just load it into Krita and clean it up in there, but I don't. That was something that came up in the comments, actually. is like, why don't I use an image editor like Photoshop or something to paint with? Um, you know, my, my advice to you would be always use whatever is the easiest for you. You know, don't, there's no reason to make things harder on yourself. It's like painting textures is hard enough as it is, so you always want to make it easier. Um, as for why I don't, um, I just, I like painting directly on the model, I guess. Um, I don't like the workflow 
of painting in an image editor and then having to come back over to Blender and refreshing it all the time. I guess if I had um, 3D code or something, I'd probably paint in that instead, but I don't know. Blender's good enough for me. It always improves, too, so and it seems like the more that um, I bring attention to it, the faster it develops. <laughs> that's, that's one cool thing about Blender. It's like if you if you rant about something in a video or whatever, you like shine a spotlight on problem areas in Blender, they tend to get fixed pretty quick. If they're easy, anyway. Um, so here I, I added the speculars, and I don't think I should have. I think that was a mistake. Usually you want to leave that till the very end. Uh, your, your brightest brights and your darkest darks, you always want to hold off on those. And I did with the blacks, but the speculars I went a little too early, I think. Um, and here I'm putting in a little bit of darkness right next to those highlights just to pop them, particularly on the edges. I'll do it again later. I'm down lower on the blade, but it's a really simple but effective trick. And they must be doing an air show or something. Yeah, right here. That's where I'm putting in the dark. Right next to the high, or right next to the edges or whatever. And it just makes them pop a little bit more. Still kind of struggling with that center part. See, I'm starting to get some of that texture down there in the bottom. I think I've painted on that, uh, like that top part of that blade, that little gash that I have in there that I painted right at the very beginning. I think I paint that thing. I had to have painted it like six times by now. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't even change anything on it. I just get bored and repaint it again, I guess. Uh, there, I, I put some of that blue down there in the bottom, kind of balance it again. I think the uh, trick with all the dents and scratches and stuff is to to use them sparingly, and one of these days I'll probably follow that rule myself. But I, I think I always go overboard. It's like it's like a here, take this, you know, it's like these. this dagger almost is at the point where it's like, it's not even a threat, because <laughs> it looks like it'll break. I don't know, I, I like doing that, though. It's like, come on, man, your dagger's looking a little rough. Oh, here I'm kind of using um, Blender's brush limitations in my favor. I just shrank it down really small, and then I kind of like stipple it around to get this uh, kind of really rough texture going. I think at this point I'm just kind of noodling, though. It's like there's not much progress being had any anywhere. It's just kind of being really nitpicky with stuff. I probably could have just stopped at this point. But I didn't. And see, I don't, I don't know why I keep repainting this section either, because it's probably the best looking spot. It's like the part that needs more work is probably the middle area. It's like I add a little bit of dents and stuff in that area, but usually the rule is is when you're in shadow, you don't want to add a lot of texture. But yeah, it looks like this is winding down now, so um, I will see you guys in the next video where we'll do the cross guard.